Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a Philadelphia Flyers midweek recap. Um, obviously, in these Boston games, we do a mini recap of these, um, and then move into going into these next games, which is going to be the title of these video. We must win. The Flyers must win these next two. Um, that is pivotal, but... It was odd. I mean, the fl the the Flyers in the three to two victory they gave Boston one point, but one an OT due to Berge falling down. That he of course got payback back. I guess karma's a bitch, and the hockey gods went well. We can't let Patrice Bergeron uh, look off for two straight games and made him have that second game that we'll get to soon. Uh, TK was able to score on a nice play in front from uh, Voracek to him. You got Kuhlman scoring. Berge of course scored in that game. But then uh, had the reason that the Flyers won, falling on his behind to let Travis Sanheim score in overtime. And then Cooch was able to score as well. Moose was very good in that game because the one thing the Flyers still did was turn the damn puck over. You still got to limit those turnovers. Um, Travis Sanheim was very good. He's been very solid of late. Uh, these last uh, three games since the start of April, all of a sudden Sanheim's been maneuvering better and looking better. Maybe it's because Myers at the end of March started getting better, so then in turn... He started going, okay, I can do more since his game is getting more confident. Who the hell knows? But uh, he definitely looks a hell of a lot better now. But the Flyers still had too many mistake plays in that game. Um, I think the Flyers just persevered through that game and actually did not even play as good of a game as they ended up playing last evening and losing. I mean, they had 25 freaking shots in the second period. And Jeremy Swayman, I mean... The dude played like a bat out of hell. He's playing great for Providence, like I said in my weekly preview. For people that check that out, if not, you can definitely check that out because it also talks about these Islanders games in more detail and Bruins games. This is going to be a much shorter, only five, about minute to a six minute max video. But in this game, Swayman played like a bat out of hell. He had 40 saves. That's third all time in a debut to get a win. Bernie is actually in first with 42. And then second, I can't remember who's in the middle of them. But Swayman's third all time. That is brilliant by him, I honestly have to say. Unfortunate for us Flyers fans, which is brilliant by him. Um, to come in and do that well. And then Vladar um, played brilliant as well. We didn't even really solve him. Um, he, the Berge just fell on his ass, and then uh, Sanheim was able to score. Um, in this game, I thought the Flyers played, honestly, better than the other game. I mean, th they played good in the first. I think um, what I remember watching the telecast, they said they had more chances than them in the first. Also had more shots by two. 25 shots in the damn second, and then sucked and laid a goose egg in the third with eight shots to four. That's just unacceptable. Uh, you had too many turnovers still. Your giveaways were double digits at 11. You got to stop doing that. I honestly did not think Carter Hart played poorly in this game. I thought he played fine. I see people posting in Facebook groups, he got outplayed by a kid in his first game. That kid just played marvelous and made saves like Tim Saunders said on the radio that most guys would just not make, where I think the one goal <clears throat> Carter Hart would want to have back is the Berge second goal that went through his five-fold, but he was still wide open in the damn slot. That's terrible defense. The Flyers had a turnover in the neutral zone lead to a, a Ber or not a Bergeron, the Marchand uh, goal that Bergeron was able to get in, or no, Lazone and Clifton were able to get an assist on, and then Bergeron was able to bury the empty netter to complete his hat trick. Uh, Morshan had an assist on Berge's second goal and first goal. So he had a very good game. Those two kicked their behind. You have to be able to shut them down, obviously, as we uh, go into um, talking about how the Flyers need to win their next two. The big part is shutting those guys down, obviously. It's hard to do, easier said than done. But you can't let them just come at you and just destroy you like the Flyers did in that second game. Um, minus the second period when they had a very good second period. And you just have to find ways. Swayman played a brilliant game. He had to find ways to score. I didn't think Hart played a bad game at all. I thought he was fine. They had 26 shots on goal. But uh, <clears throat> Bergeron um, on the one was open in front of the net and got set up nicely. The other was a rebound. Maybe Hart would want that back. But uh, he stopped the first shot. There's nobody out there to clear the front of the net. And the other's open in the middle of the slot. So it wasn't the most sexy of defense either, I must say. But as we quickly preview these Islanders and Boston games, probably end up being actually a seven-minute video, 
In the Islanders game, you just got to play them like you did last week. Last week, the Flyers outshot them. It was 32-24. to The Flyers actually looked pretty good in that game, minus again. Um, one key thing, they still gave away the puck six or seven times. I can't remember exactly. And in some pivotal moments where um, in Hart's first game back, he had to come up absolutely huge to even get that game to a shootout. So if you can play them like you did in that minus the big, big, big kahuna that's been an issue for the Flyers in March that's carried into April, even in their better play, is the turnovers. You might be able to get a 3-2 win minus a 3-2 loss. Just get your heads out of your butts when it comes to the turnovers and get it going, get it churning, and get winning some games. If you play them like you did last week and then eliminate more turnovers, you should be able to get this win. Um, And then the Boston game is actually an oddity time on Saturday, 2 p.m. start time. Um, you have to play the Bruins, honestly, like you did more so in the freaking, not not to the highest degree, you're never going to get 25 shots in a period again, most likely, but like you came at them full force in the second period, you got to just play them like that. This Flyers team, I understand Voracek's quote from a bit back now where he said no teams really play a full 60, uh, paraphrasing, um, but you can play a lot better throughout, and you can find different ways to get more net front traffic. The Flyers were getting some good shots on net, but you could have got more net front traffic maybe in Swayman and Vladar to kind of throw them off the game a little bit more, which is something that even though you had a lot of shots on net, you didn't have the most deflections, the net front shots. He made the one nice save on Farabee's um, deflection in the first period, Swayman did, but if you got that going more, that gives you the best chance to be able to beat these Bruins. If Reyes back, he was skating this week, that obviously makes it a little bit bit harder but it might be his first game back so then you just gotta attack 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 still and then if obviously the young kids are in you just gotta attack 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 for the flyers i would assume sorokin will be in against them with the isles because he seems to be in achilles heel for the flyers another young netminder that's just playing them great and um <clears throat> you just gotta attack the isles like you did in the game on saturday bring some spunk bring some force to the game samuel moore's bring good he's br- bringing that spunk and force in the lineup i thought lazinski was good and it was a s- mistake to take him out of the lineup keep him in the lineup these next two games he's been good in his first two games very good in the face off dot and has bring energy to the ice what the hell did you take him out for some of these lineup changes have been suspect get the lineup set the right way to go into these games play like you did especially in that second period obviously you're not going to get 25 shots a game but bring that spunk bring that fire bring that energy and you can beat boston and new york because guess what you freak have to. If the Flyers don't win these next two games, their playoff hopes are pretty much disastrous at that point. They're hard now, but like I said in the weekly preview, I only thought they would beat Boston in two out of three. They still have a chance to do that, but they have to beat the Islanders also and play like they did last week and beat them this time and not lose and preferably beat, well actually for the Islanders it doesn't matter because we're not going to catch them, but just beat them in any way, shape, or form. Boston, you have to beat them in regulation. That is key because this is the last game against Boston. You must beat them in regulation. And if the Flyers can do that, then they have a very good chance. And then last but not least, I'm not even going to go into this game much because it's going to annoy me talking about the last games against the Sabres. Beat the damn Sabres at 2 p.m. on Sunday. If you can do that, your playoff hopes are still very much alive. But then they're in the hands of other teams, and you just got to keep winning and hope other teams can beat Boston. But at least they're alive if you can beat the damn Sabres, beat the Islanders tomorrow, and beat the Bruins on Saturday. So this has been a Philadelphia Flyers weekly check-in where we previewed the games upcoming for the rest of the week and recapped the games against Boston. These next two, actually next three games, are must-wins. But these next two against our in-division opponents, obviously against great opponents, are wins that the Flyers must have and need to play up to their opponent, where the Sabres game is a game that you just need to stop playing down to your opponent and just win that damn game. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is SportsFan News. I'm Joe Bork, a.k.a. Pluto Joe. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Try to hit 130 by the end of this week or hopefully by the start of next week at the latest at 125 right now. So please get that going up, everybody. And have a great, safe, and pleasant day. And enjoy the hockey. Peace out, everybody.